Hello dear student. Welcome to another lecture in programming in C++. This will be the second last lecture in this series. After the last lecture, you will be having practical sessions which will be held online live and the link uh, for downloading Turbo C++, a new compiler which is used in our lab, which will be provide I will provide this link in your Google Classroom. Also, I will provide with instructions to download and install Tur Turbo C++. I request all of you to download this compiler because this is the one we are using currently in our lab. So it won't make any difficulties while your practical examinations. In this lecture, we will learn about arrays. Arrays, elements of arrays how to initialize an array, the multi-dimensional arrays, and also we will learn how to pass arrays to functions and also how to use arrays to display strings. Arrays. Arrays are a collection of identical objects which are stored in consecutive memory locations under a common heading or a variable name. So far, we have learned about different variables. We have learned about int variable, float variable, etc. All these variables store only one element. That is maybe one int number, a one floating point number, a character, etc. These variables will store only one element. Today, we are learning about another variable which can store multiple elements, multiple numbers or multiple characters can be stored in form of rows and columns. Such variables are known as arrays. Therefore, arrays are variables which can store a number of elements in the form of rows and columns. The individual values of arrays that are the array elements are or can be variables and these individual values are known as array elements. Just like we have declared functions that we have learned in our previous videos, we can also declare arrays. Arrays can be declared just like function by saying what type of variables are we storing in arrays. That is, is it an integer variable, a floating point variable, etc. The data type, the name of the array. We can uh, give the name for the array and we will give an expression. This expression will contain how many elements will be there in an array. Therefore, array declaration consists of the data type, name, and expression. There can be multidimensional arrays also. We can store data in the form of rows and columns. Uh, we can store as rows only, we can uh, store as columns only, and also we can store as rows as well as columns. Therefore, uh, uh, array which contain both rows and columns will be two-dimensional. Therefore, we can have two-dimensional or three-dimensional or maybe multi-dimensional arrays which can be declared in C++. Arrays are very useful when we deal with higher order physics problems such as tensors. Uh, we use arrays to calculate our tensor multiplications, etc. So, arrays are very important as physicists and as we learn physics. So, in this uh, chapter, let us learn how to play with arrays. So, array declaration consists of type of array. That is, what uh, data type are we entering? What are the type of the data which we are giving to the array? Can it be an integer, a floating point, a character or whatever it may be? We will declare what is the elements which will come, what are the type of the elements which will come into that array. We will give name for that array. Uh, usually we will give a name which is not a standard name which is used in the C++ as we have named many uh, functions. You may know how to name uh, an array also. 
Now we will give what is the dimension of an array. So one expression, this expression if it contains only one square bracket, this means that it is a one dimensional array. If it consists of two square brackets, then it will consist of two different type of arrays. And inside this expressions, we will give how many memory locations are needed. For example, if you are declaring an array such that int mark 300, then you are asking the compiler to save 300 spaces for uh, storing a data in a linear form, in a row form or in a column form. 300 straight data storage spaces will be allotted for this particular array where marks is the name of the array and int is the data type. We can also give the storage class. We can also declare which storage class it should come into. We have learned about different storage classes in our last video. There are automatic storage classes, uh, there are static storage classes, external storage classes, etc. So, uh, when we doesn't uh, specify the storage class, it will definitely go into the automatic storage class, which will happen in any variable declaration which we have done so far. If we declare just int sum, then that uh, sum variable will go just into the automatic storage class. But if we declare the storage classes that static, then it will go directly into a static storage class. Now, uh, here, character, which says that the uh, elements which are given are not numbers, they are characters. Line is the array name and there will be 90 straight locations in row or in column. Not in row and column. In row, it will be having 90 storage locations. The another example is static int value 20. Here static is the storage class, int is the data type, value is the array name and there will be 20 elements in this array. So how can we initialize an array? The automatic arrays, that is if the array is automatic, then automatically it cannot be initialized. We, if we need to initialize arrays, then we have to specify their storage class and also we have to specify uh, the type in which uh, the elements, the initial values of the elements. Initial values of the elements can be initialized as the storage class, data type, array name and expression, expression which contains how many elements will be there is equal to element 1 which gives the value of the first element, value of the second element which is separated by a comma up to value of the last element. This is how we specify an array. Uh, this is how we initialize an array. So to initialize an array, you need to say what is the storage class the data type, the array name and expression. This is how we declare an array. To initialize, you have to give equal to, within the curly braces, give the values of the elements in the order 1, 2, 3, etc. separated by commas. So example, in example, let's see, here we have int value 7. Therefore, here we have an array with the array name value and its data type is int and it have seven elements which will be stored in it and here we have initialized it such that the first element will carry a value 10 the second has a value 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 uh, continuously so in an array this uh, computer the compiler start counting from zero Hope you remember when we have done in for loop, we have initialized our i to be equal to 0 and n to be, uh, that is the number of iterations 
was kept in minus 1. Hope you remember how we declared our for data loop or while data loop. This was done because the compiler start counting from only uh, 0. It starts counting from 0. Uh, that is, if we need 3 iteration, we will keep it as 2 such that it can start counting from 0, 1, 2 and there will be 3 iterations. Just like that, in the case of array elements, the compiler will start from counting 0. So, this uh, 10 will be the 0 element, 11 will be the first element, 12 will be the second element, 13 will be the third, 14 will be the fourth, 15 will be the 5 and 16 will be the 6. So, if we ask for an output value 0, this is how we ask for an output. If we want to output only one value, then we will ask the compiler, we will give C out value that is the name of the array and within the bracket uh, which within the square bracket say if you are asked for the fifth element then it will start counting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 and we will get an output 15 it is not like 1 2 3 4 5 and we'll get an output 14 it is like it starts counting from 0 so the first element we enter will be the 0th element and the last element we enter will be the n minus 1 element therefore the value 0 is 10 while value 6 is 16 now we will learn about multi-dimensional arrays as we have already said, we can define arrays not as a row or not as a column. We can define it in multi-dimensional. There can be 2 by 2 arrays, 3 by 3 arrays or 3 by 4 arrays. There can be n by m arrays which are possible. That is, we can find an n-dimensional array just as we define a one-dimensional array. In one dimensional array, we have defined it using a data type, an array name and expression within a square bracket. So, only difference is that if we ha you have to define a two dimensional array, you will use two square brackets and each square bracket will contain how many elements will be there. The first square bracket will tell you the row element and the second square bracket will tell you the uh, column element just like that you can define an n dimensional array here in the example if you have given here in the example you can see we have defined a two dimensional array with data type integer the array name is x and there are two dimensional arrays with two elements each this array is also initialized that is it has a value 1, 2, 3, 4. That is, this array is a two-dimensional array. This x array is a two-dimensional array. It has two rows and two columns. This will be num 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. This is the way in which the number, the initialized array is declared. If the array declaration was just x2 is equal to uh, curly braces 1, 2, then it will be just an array that is x is equal to 1, 2. But in this case, this is a two-dimensional array. Now, the, uh, since we know that the compiler will start counting from 0, 0, so, this is the 0, 0 element and this is the 0, 1 element, this is 1, 0 element and this will be the 1, 1 element. Therefore, this will go to 0, 0, 2 will go to 0, 1. The 3 will go to 1, 0 and 4 will go to 1, 1. So, if you have to declare 
two dimensional array then make sure that the value which initializing value which you give is in this format that it start from the first row first column and it ends with the last row last column element and you can also obtain output by just a z out x10 or 11 etc and you will definitely get an output there now let us learn how to pass arrays into functions so far we have seen many user defined functions so uh, why can't we just uh, define a function such that the function itself is an array it is possible and we can pass arrays into user defined function an entire array and its calculation can be passed into a function and this can be done in c++ an array name can also be used as a argument or the function and its declaration and no subscript or square uh, brackets uh, are required to evoke a function using arrays for example if you uh, want to declare a function output which contain an array or array calculation then you will declare uh, the output such that output which gives the function name this is how you declare that function uh, with a data type and within the parenthesis where you give the arguments you declare the array you declare the array with its data type name and uh, number of elements which come inside this curl uh, this square bracket and also many other elements many other uh, variables which you use uh, for manipulating this particular array or any function you have to commit so this is how you pass array to a function so passing array to a function doesn't need you need to uh, specify or say uh, here that uh, this particular function holds an array just uh, say it in the parenthesis that one of the variable used is an array array is a variable and we can declare number of variables as arguments so within the declaration you say that one of the variables which is used inside this particular user defined function is an array so this is how we pass arrays to user defined functions now how to use arrays as strings now what is a string string is a data uh, number of collection of characters which is surrounded by the double quotes hope you remember the first string we have learned was hello world hello space world space and explain exclamation mark this was our first string which we have used we have used many strings so far many questions like, uh, such as uh, what is the array number provide the array number our, all our question so was question frames was strings so uh, the uh, a group of characters which is written inside uh, double quotes which need to come in the same order and the same way in which it is written are called strings now we can use arrays so that it can store strings and also give output of individual uh, string uh, character so we can use arrays such that it can store strings a string variable contains a number a collection of characters surrounded by double quotes the sing, uh, syntax for storing a string is uh, data type the name expression is equal to what is there to be inside the string there may be within the double quotes you say hello world or hello whatever it may be for example you see the data type is definitely character the string is six is equal to hello this is how we initialize a string so if you want to get an output you just ask to z out uh, str here str is the name you can use any other name str uh, for 
uh, 4 will give you an output such that it will start counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and your result will be an O. So this is how we can manipulate, we can extract ideas from array as strings also. So uh, we can use arrays to store and get a uh, result from strings. So, so far we have learned about arrays. We have learned about multidimensional arrays and how to initialize, how to use it in functions, etc. So, shall we conclude this session by uh, giving a small example which you are already familiar with, which is matrix multiplication. So, uh, in matrix multiplication, you may know how to do a matrix multiplication uh, initially. That is, uh, when you are given two matrices, say A and B, then uh, you multiply those matrix, right? Maybe you have a matrix, uh, say A11, A12, A13, uh, where A11 is the uh, first element in the row and the column. So A21, A22, A23, A31, a32, A33. Remember, our compiler will start counting only from 0. So, 1, 1 will be 0, 0. Into B11, B12, B13, B21, B22, B23, B31, B32 and B33. So, how are you going to multiply this? So, what uh, are you going to do is, you will multiply this elements by this elements, right? This is how you are going to do this. And this will be the first element of our matrix multiplication. So the first element will be A11 into B11 plus A12 into B21 plus A13 into B31. That is, if the resultant matrix C is of the form C11 to C33, then our C11 element, the C11 element will be a sum of A11 into B11 plus A12 into B21 plus A13 into B31, right? So, we uh, in this program uh, we are asking the compiler to multiply two uh, matrices which are three by three matrices also we can uh, let them do an n by n matrix or whatever it may be let's uh, do with the simple example that is a three by three matrix so uh, now uh, what we the logic of doing this is First, we will give these elements, elements value and ask the compiler to store it in a form of matrix. So, we have to define a matrix A, then matrix B, then uh, do an algorithm such that the elements given will be stored into a matrix uh, uh, and given by the name A. Elements uh, uh, given next will be stored into a matrix defined by the name B. Then we have to do some program such that it will multiply the first element with the first element. That is 1-1 one, one element with the 1-1 one, one element, 1-2 one, element with the 2-1 element, 1-3 one, element with the 3-1 element and add all these and store it in another matrix. Uh, so we have to define uh, another matrix C also, another matrix and store it in its first element and do all these multiplications. So this is what we want uh, our compiler to do. So let us see how can we use uh, the beauty of the matrix multiplication right here. So hash include iStream using namespace standard and int main. You are clear with that. Now we are declaring our variables right here. We are declaring a variable that is a matrix a which have three row elements and three column elements 
Now we are declaring another variable which is also a matrix which have three uh, row element and three column element. Now we are declaring another variable which is also a matrix with a matrix name which a variable name mul say mul which uh, can be used for multiplication any name as possible. This will also have three rows and three columns right. Now another uh, some variables i, j, k etc which will come in handy while doing this. So all these variables will have integer as the data type. Now we are asking the compiler to see out. Now we are asking the compiler uh, to get information. So it will see out enter the first uh, matrix element. And so it will it is asking the user to enter elements which will go into the first matrix. So here the user will enter the elements in a specified manner such that 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? Maybe if it is three dimensional matrix, it will uh, the user is going to enter the numbers as that uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. Next, uh, he will enter uh, the elements that is uh, 0, 2 uh, and uh, so on. So the first element of that is he will enter the element this this and this then will come to this this and this then this this and this so this is the way in which the user is going to enter so we have to take it in an arrays in the form of an array known as individual numbers so we are defining a program using a for loop such that all these elements, the entered character will go into an array and will be placed in the definite order. We don't want a mix and match within the arrays. It should go to the definite places. So here we using a, a for loop, a nested for loop, a two for loops are used. That is first of all loop when i is equal to zero and i less than three i plus plus if you are using less than or equal to then you should give two uh, hope you remember why it is a difference so here i have used less than three so i is equal to zero i less than three i plus plus so the compiler will come here it will initialize i is equal to zero and test and that i is less than three of course it's less than three so it will go to the next line and find another for loop such that j is initialized to zero and j less than three j plus plus so j is also less than three so it will uh, give the first element zero zero so inside the array the zero zero element will be compiled now again it will go to the this number not to the uh, former for loop to the next for loop the for loop just is just beyond so it will increase j by 1 so now j is equal to 1 i is equal to 0 so it will store the 0 1 element again uh, it will go to this loop here now also i is equal to 0 but j is equal to 2 so it will store the next element 0 2 now this will come here and see that j is not less than 3 so it uh, go to the next loop and see what happens here i turns to 1 at this moment now i is less than 3 again it will come to here and say for j is equal to 0 j equal to 1 and j equal to 2 elements will be stored that is 0 1 0 2 and z, uh, sorry uh, 0 1 and 0 2 elements will be stored again it will go here uh, say i is equal to 2 again it will jump over here and it will, it will store 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2 elements and here we have stored all the elements which are provided in uh, the form of a matrix 3, 3. Again, we have to uh, see out enter the uh, matrix elements of the second matrix. Here also we have to use a nested for loop to store these elements in the form of a matrix B, I, G. 
here also the first element stored will be b00 and the last element stored will be b22 now we have to multiply this matrix so to multiply this matrix uh, we are using another uh, nested for loop so here we have to use three for loops okay the first for loop is to define this matrix give value to this matrix and the next for loop is used such that uh, the multiplication of the elements will be stored to the uh, product matrix such that uh, during the first cycle that is i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 0 we have initialized our mul uh, matrix i j is equal to 0 therefore we will come into the another loop and check if k is equal to 0 and k less than 3 because k is the element which is going to vary here so we have i is equal to 0 j equal to 0 and k equal to 0 in our first uh, cycle so 0 plus e equal to hope you remember this operator this operator just says mul ij is equal to mul ij plus this element so this is a shorthand which we used for this so uh, mul ij now is equal to 0 now it will multiply a00 and b00 with uh, a00 and b00 will be multiplied and added with m00 and will be stored in m00 in the next cycle it will go to here and make k is equal to 1 such that a01 and b uh, sorry a01 and b10 that is hope you remember how we have to do the multiplication we have to multiply this element to this element this is what we have done in the first cycle that is a00 multiplied to a00 and added to a c11 which was initialized to be 0 and this c11 is now uh, a11 plus b11 plus a1 uh, is added over here now the next process is not if this is not complete c11 is a11 b11 plus a12 b21 plus a13 b31 so next we are going to do a12 b21 this is what we do in our next step that is a01 is multiplied by uh, sorry uh, a01 will be multiplied by b10 and will be added to c11 that is c00 itself again we'll make a change in k and we'll make k is equal to 2 such that a02 will be multiplied by b20 and again will be stored to c00 now c00 is a product uh, is a sum of three different products now this condition becomes negative after three cycles k will become greater than 3 or equal to 3 so it will go to the next step and make j is equal to 1 and come to this point that is the next element we are going to work is with 0 1 we will repeat all these cycles that is 0 1 will be stored as a sum of three different products because we have three iterations here again it will change the value of j says that uh, the third element stored will be 0 2 after that we will change the value of i and all these steps will be uh, repeated until we store the c22 element and thus we have stored all these elements now what we have to do we have to get we have to print the results we have just store the elements so we have to print the result again for printing the result we are using a nested for loop that is the first element printed will be uh, mul 0 the second element printed will be mul 01 all with a tab the next element will printed will be mul 02 then it will give a line uh, it will uh, give uh, it will pass on to the next line 
and print one zero one uh, one zero one two one three then pass on a next line and will print two zero two one two two so this is how we are going to get so this loop was used to print the result this was used to multiply both uh, elements this was used to store the elements entered in two different uh, two different matrices so hope you are clear with that let's uh, try doing this so here i have entered all these so let's try compiling this this is the same as we have discussed we will try compiling this so there are zero errors so we will go on let's do a simple multiplication which you are already familiar with maybe like multiplication with an identity matrix so it will be uh, very good for you to calculate the result with these let the next element uh, will be an identity matrix so This is our answer. When we multiply a uh, matrix with an um, identity matrix, the matrix itself is the answer. Uh, you can also try with many complicated matrices. Let's try with another matrix oh, where answer is trivial. Already know. What will happen when we multiply two different matrices so this is gonna happen 3 into 3 is 9 so it will be 9 plus 9 plus 9 that will be the first element similarly for every other elements so hope you're clear with how the matrix the arrays uh, works how we can multiply an array how we can define an array and how we can manipulate arrays and have fun with it so see you in the next uh, video. Thank you.